What appears here in the video is built on insights I have at the moment. However, I reserve the right to change my insights at any time, and if I do, I may delete or replace content on the channel. So take the video under limited warranty. Hello friends, today we are going to find out how the ideas are created for us. You must have once encountered a situation where you came to write something, and you sit and wait. Eh, I'm in trouble. You wait and ask, what will I write? What shall I say? Before an important meeting what will I say there? So there are people who are self-aware, and they literally run a question in their head. And then get ideas. And there are those in a lower consciousness, that they just come to write and they wait. Expect the ideas to come to them out of nowhere, without asking questions. There are now levels of awareness. But the common denominator for everyone is, that everyone has an experience that tells us, you do not know everything. You have to wait for something that does know to answer you. Will answer you. Either you turn to him with a question and then he answers you, or you wait as if I am in trouble, I wait for an answer, and then you expect him to understand on his own, and he will create an idea for you. Now the source of ideas is deliberately delayed with the ideas. He makes you wait, so you realize you do not know everything. You depend on him. This is amazing. We have a connection. With the subconscious. We have a connection with an algorithm. We have a connection with a source of ideas. A source of ideas that creates ideas for us. He creates ideas for us. I mean I had no idea and he suddenly invents an idea for me out of nowhere. Gives me ideas on what to do, what to talk, what to write, how to talk, how to present things. So if until now you were atheists who say there is no creator in the world. Suddenly you start getting concepts, hey. Moment. The source of my ideas, this algorithm, is creating ideas for me. Even if it resides within me, it is autonomous and independent. I'm not part of it. He may be taking my place somewhere here, but he's independent and he's autonomous. I need to ask him questions in order for him to answer me. He gets information through me, understands my knowledge and then decodes them, to invent new ideas for me based on previous knowledge I had. For example, a man comes and says, what is this? People plowing the land? It's a septic job. Then they sow seeds inside, and then they water them with water, it's a very tedious and annoying and hard job. Yak. You should look for a more pleasant way. Better, more natural. In order to gain new insights, I will have to resort to facts that I already know. I know the soil becomes flexible in winter, it rains, the soil becomes flexible, in summer when the soil is dry it is hard. So I say, okay, if I push the seed in the winter, when the soil is flexible, it will save me the plowing. All our ideas, a new idea, to push a seed into the ground when it is flexible, in its season. It is an idea that is based on prior knowledge. I see rain I notice the ground is becoming flexible. All the ideas that come to us are based on prior knowledge. But it is still in the realm of creating new connections, a source of ideas that creates new ideas for me that I did not have before. So here we have a relationship with the creator. Or for example, time. What does time do? How do I know there is time at all? I know it takes me a while to get from here to here. I have to wait for it to come from here to here. I see the sun start here, in the evening get there. It takes her a while to get there. Suddenly we get an idea, time. And this time, what is he doing? He creates for me I mean he allows me to do actions, he allows me to get from here to here. It allows me to move the jaw, to talk. It allows me to think, to evolve. It allows plants to evolve. Time creates possibilities. Suddenly the realm of the Creator, which until today had been perceived by us as something hidden, in sensory Kabbalah, we manage to perceive it through our senses, is no longer so hidden. So on the one hand this Creator, is not as they presented him in the primitive religions, those who passed theories from one to another from one to another, and peppered idle peppers instead of admiring the nature around them. So the Creator is not as presented to this day, but a Creator who creates possibilities, a Creator who creates ideas, once again, 
a creator of possibilities, this creator exists. Then I ask, does the universe also have a creator? Or only I as a human being have a creator? A creator who creates ideas for me. So it is clear that there is time, the time that creates possibilities, it is expressed in everything, it all depends on time. The universe also depends on time, so time created possibilities for the universe as well, you say there is a creator for the universe. But the question is has the universe always been one way or another? Has there always been a universe? Since the beginning of time there has been a universe? Time? It's hard for me to grasp that he has a starting point. Can you catch a start to the time? Where does time come from? If he has never been? Where did it come from? Time allows everything, everything depends on it, it allows to think, allows to develop, allows to plan, allows to remember, allows to create, allows to move in space, allows everything. Could there be something ahead of time? Could there have been a point where there was no time? And suddenly time popped up? It's just logically impossible. Because even a law cannot be formed without time, because it takes time to be formed. Nothing can happen without time to allow it, so time must be the oldest creator. Is the ability, the characteristic of the creator, which is the oldest enabling. But one can look from a second point of view and say, that since I see that there are all kinds of creatures today, I must try to catch the beginning of everything. And apparently the beginning is that there is a law that defines what is right to be. And if this law defined that it is right to be nothing, just for the sake of the mental exercise, let us say that the law will define that it is right to be nothing, still the law itself will exist. He needs to define what is nothing, a space that contains nothing. It must be defined as something. This means that the law that defines, right to be nothing, or right to be something, itself must always be. I mean there must always be a law that defines what is right to be. So in practice there is no such thing as anything, it was just a thought exercise. I mean there are two ways to perceive that the Creator is obligated to be in reality. One, without time there would be nothing, if there was a point that did not exist, it would continue to eternity. A space that contains only empty volume. So time is a characteristic of the Creator. And the second way to perceive that there is a Creator, is that there must be a law that defines what is right to be, even nothing must be defined what is nothing, and if so the law has always existed and the law is the creator. And maybe there was a stage where there was no sequence in time but everything was fragmented, a kind of such primitive time, and then time was upgraded to what it is today, successive and continuous time. Now, why is it permanent that every organism is born from a mating of organisms like it that were before it? It is fixed that there is a continuity of something primary. An apple tree will give birth to apple trees, humans will give birth to humans. Why? Why is there such a law that I have to understand all the time there is continuity for our generations, we are similar to our predecessors? Seemingly it is confusing. Because I say if time did not have a beginning, but it always has, then why should I perceive that there is a beginning to this world? Living here has a beginning. Who was before the first matings that gave birth to the world of black niggers, or white Albanians, or brown and yellows and all sorts of colors? Who was the first? Who were the first matings? Where did they come from? Why do I have to perceive that there is a beginning here to this universe? For trees. Why did he not state that people are suddenly created? You are walking down the street, suddenly you see a person out of nowhere. Looking here, suddenly a tree pops up out of nowhere, with no connection. Why did he state that there is one connection born of the other as his example? This is a question for the next video. But what did we learn in this video? There is a creator for the world, there is a creator for myself who creates ideas for me, he is an image of the creator he is similar to the creator in that he also allows me, he creates ideas for me. He is like a son of the creator, the creator has sons, and I myself cannot create from nothing. This is something that is important to know. I have a connection with an algorithm, with a subconscious, that is able to create ideas for me, and it is important to perceive that I am not the creator myself, but something that creates ideas for me because if it was not important to perceive like that, 
I would not have to have conversations here inside. Conversations that prove to me that I depend on the source of ideas that will create ideas for me. I did not have to hear my inner voice, I did not have to argue here inside, what I will say what I will write, I did not have to, I would know everything. I had a constant stream of continuous information, and you would hear me talking in sequence, not stopping at not nothing. But this is not so, it is important that I know that I am not the creator himself, I have to ask for ideas from the creator who creates ideas for me, and only then do I get ideas. So in the following videos we will try to find out, why was it so important to the creator? For time, which creates for us possibilities. Why was it important to him that we perceive that this specific world does have a starting point, because you say, where did the first man come from? The first animals? All the first trees? This brings us to the point where the answer is related to development. But we'll talk about that in another video. But in the meantime, bye bye. In our temporary channel, we deal with all sorts of interesting areas. We will present here instructive natural phenomena. And we will talk here about a worldview that gives meaning to life and hope for a better future. If you are interested in this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified of any new video that comes up. And see you next time. Writing and Editing Yohai Yinan, Elhiani Translation Google's Translation Narration Microsoft Azure Voice Eric There is no copyright on this content, and any useful use may be made in whole or in part. I was the voice of US WaveNet G in Google TTS.